Well guys, I'm back in the Charizard onesie, so you know what that means. I said yes to a bunch of products that I probably shouldn't have. Let's crack them open. Before we continue, special thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring part of this video. Best Buy has all the gaming gear you need, like the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 gaming laptop, powered by an AMD Ryzen processor and cutting edge Radeon graphics, built to game with amplified performance and a premium display. Top-end, custom-tuned hardware is housed inside of a slim and light chassis, offering an uncompromised balance of power and mobility. The Legion AI engine and Legion Coldfront 3.0 thermal system ensure maximum performance with controlled thermals to deliver an incredible experience no matter the task. AMD Advantage laptops are built for best-in-class gaming with exclusive smart performance technologies and premium displays. Check out the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 and browse all of Best Buy's gaming gear with the description links below. Thanks again to Best Buy for sponsoring this one. Now back to the main video. So if you're new to this series, the way it basically works, it's super straightforward. I basically say yes, or I should say my brand slash sales manager says yes to every single product request that we get in our email inbox. Sometimes the products are good, sometimes they're garbage, but it's always interesting either way. And our first product of the day, let's see, is the Mauno AUMH601 Studio Headphones. Is it a headset or just headphones? I think it's just headphones. 50 millimeter drivers with high isolation earmuffs, double audio ports, adjustable and foldable headband. Okay. On the box it says these are professional monitor headphones, but they look kind of budget to me. Oh, it's got a, a coiled cable with quarter inch, quarter inch plugs. Okay, we're starting to at least look a little bit professional and the headphone themselves. Oh no, the adjustable headband is plastic. That's never good. That's that's gonna break at some point, like sooner than later. The rest of the headband, I believe this is also plastic. I mean, it's got sort of this fabric. It's like a faux leather, really cheap faux leather on the outside, uh, but it's probably plastic underneath. Kind of feels like it. The ear cups feel pretty comfortable, actually. We'll see how they actually feel once they're on my head. Looks like you get double audio jacks. Quarter inch here, eighth inch there. I wonder if this is just an adapter. Ah, yes. So you got an eighth inch hiding underneath the quarter inch adapter. Just initial impressions from, from putting them on right away is that they're pretty comfortable. I would say the, the headband is the only thing I'm concerned about just because it's not the softest material underneath. It's sort of this cheap fabric and then underneath that is it's kind of hard. So I'm wondering if I'll get any kind of fatigue from wearing these for, for too long. Why don't I go uh, take it for a spin? All right, I've shuffled over to my wall PC. I'm gonna listen to audio through here. Right now I have the headphones connected with the quarter inch jacks uh, to a Behringer Euphoria UMC22 audio interface. Nothing too fancy and that's going straight to the PC. So I'm just gonna listen to a couple tracks right now and let you guys know what I think. And here we go. Okay, so um, I, I won't say they're great. The highs and mids just seem a little tinny. So vocals, for instance, are, aren't super inspiring. Uh, they're kind of flat. So I would not pay more than 50 to $60 for these. Let me just double check the price though. I'm on Amazon here and these are going for $44. Okay, so yeah, I said $50 on the low end. These are going for 45. That's about what I would I, I would imagine. That being said, for 45 bucks, I, I haven't done extensive reviews on headphones or headsets in that price range, but I would imagine that because there's so many options, you could probably find something a little bit better for your, for your money, uh, more bang for your buck. All right, let's hope this product is a bit more exciting than a pair of headphones. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. What is all this stuff? Amdeer? A Ampere. Oh, what? Shower Power Pro, the Hydro Power Shower Speaker. You're joking. This is not a loofah. That's hilarious. Why isn't there a shower cap? I could have used one of those. Fast wireless charging anywhere. It's a wireless charger. Oh, it looks like you can charge three devices at a time, perhaps. One, two, three. There's a USB-C port on the end. That's probably why they sent me the cable uh, because there's no cable in the box that this came in. All right, let's see it in action. My phone could use some juice. Okay, first test. Will it charge with a phone case? I've got a D-brand, a relatively slim D-brand case on my Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Um, but let's go ahead and slap it on here. Charges right away. Let's make sure that this one works. Yep. And then this one on the right. Oh, all right. It says you can charge three Qi enabled devices simultaneously or two Qi devices plus an Apple Watch. This should still work then on this third platform because in, in the diagram, they show the Apple Watch being on the right side, but then they also showed an option with another phone 
on the right side. So I don't know why this ain't, this ain't working. Let me take the case off. Yep, right side's not working. I, I don't know if that's by design. The manual isn't very clear on that. I mean, technically it says that it should be able to charge three of these devices simultaneously, which would mean this one on the right, this right platform should work. Weird. This is $140? Is this like a third party seller? No, this thing's actually that expensive. What? Why? First review, top reviews from the United States. One star. Great concept, very poor execution. Now, this guy noted some inconsistencies with the charging. Seems pretty polarizing. Actually, oof, there's, there's a string of one star reviews. Boom, 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 boom. I, I would probably pass on this one. There's cheaper ways to wirelessly charge your devices. For that price, it should get five stars. It should be a five star product. For a freaking device charger, that expensive, there's no excuse. Honestly, I don't even know if a five-star charger would be worth that money. That's insane. All right, how much is, uh, I'm just gonna check how much is this stupid shower speaker. Same brand, Ampere Shower Power. Okay, this is $99. All right, this got even worse reviews than, than that product though. 3.7 out of five, not, not the greatest. All right, so how does this work? You got the input here, so this is the side that would connect to your plumbing, and then you've got your shower head uh, over here. You connect your shower head on this side. These soft touch buttons. An app is needed to use this device? Are you kidding me? I hate it already. Why do I need an app for this? It's a Bluetooth speaker. Just because you put it in the shower doesn't mean it needs to be app enabled. This is ridiculous. Shut up. Okay, I, I tried and tried, but I cannot figure out how to get this paired with the app. It just doesn't work. Like I, I've tried a million times. And the thing is like there's a QR code, which is supposed to be your manual, but it only takes you to the page that shows you how to install this in the shower, which by the way, you can only install this thing a couple different ways. One is if you have like one of those um, waterfall shower heads, um, or you could attach it to a wand, but then it just, it just looks really heavy and cumbersome. And finally, it says that you can mount this to the very bottom faucet of the shower uh, where the spout is, which also doesn't make sense to me because because then the, the, the sound is coming from your feet. And then if you want to control it, you got to bend all the way down unless you have the, the freaking power adapter or remote that's probably sold separately. I just don't understand this product. I, there's no manual for connecting it to the app, but at the end of the day, considering the mediocre reviews, uh, I'm not too disappointed that I can't get this working. This is chalking up to be the most disappointing of the series yet. First two batch of products, kind of duds, I, I hate to say it. I, I'm really hoping something picks up soon or this is just gonna be me slaughtering products which I don't mind. What the, Oh, look at that. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Oh, I've seen this. This is like, it turns your, your room or whatever, your house into a, a racetrack. And there's actually a, a physical go-kart and you use your Nintendo Switch to, to operate the car. It looks too cool of an idea to actually work well. I don't know though. Oh dude, this is sick. It's Luigi. I got the Luigi one. Oh yeah. Wow, and there's a camera on it, of course, so you can, Monitor the video feed from your switch. Oh, this is the this is for the the track these little obstacles or maybe the gates So I think you use these to set up your course I'm actually pretty excited for this But I think I'm gonna test it out when I get home uh, because there's just more room there for uh, for activities And we can probably set up a much cooler course Also, there's another product today that had its uh, the model name and, and what it was printed on the shipping box and so I already know what it is and it's definitely a product that I need to test at home and you, you'll see why in just a moment. But um, we're gonna go ahead and wait till we get home to test that as well as this thing. Out of all the packages today, I'm most curious about this one because it's the heaviest of them all. Like it feels like there's a few dumbbells in here. I don't know what's going on, but let's, let's find out. What are you? What is this mountain RGB gaming keyboard? Whoa. Holy moly. Once again, uh, we have another keyboard that's smaller. Mountain? Why have I never heard of this brand? Like the packaging actually looks really nice. Maybe you guys know exactly who they are and like, Kyle, how do you not know Mountain? These guys are freaking awesome. It's Mountain, come on. I've never heard of this brand. So we got a macro pad, a sort of Steam Deck looking thing, a mouse, Everest 60 numpad, and a mouse pad. Ooh, now we're talking, it's getting good. All right, I got everything set up and I gotta say this is at least this keyboard, which is called the Everest Max. This is like the most extra gaming keyboard I think I've ever seen. Uh, that, that isn't like fully DIY. Uh, it prides itself on modularity. So for example, it comes included with 
this 10 key number pad uh, that actually can be attached to it on either side. So it just, it sticks out, there's USB-C connection right there. Pop it in, yeah, and so you've got these four display keys that are completely customizable and a working number pad. But if you don't need it for whatever reason and you wanna clean up space on your, on your desk, then you just remove it. Pretty cool. And then it also comes included with this, this multimedia module that uh, you can either attach either to the left or the right side at the top of the keyboard. I'm gonna go on the right side. Once it's connected, you've got multimedia functions here, as well as a dial, this nice little display dial, actually. It's, uh, it's got an LCD on it, so you can uh, do volume, of course. You can change its functionality for things like lighting or switching profiles, brightness, uh, even PC info, that's cool. You can actually see your, uh, your CPU utilization, GPU usage, uh, HD, internet, Wi-Fi, RAM usage, pretty cool. The keyboard itself is also quite nice and, uh, and the switches themselves are actually hot swappable. This is a fully hot swappable panel. If you wanted to, you could totally swap these out for whatever switches you desire. Well, I, I say that with an asterisk because this is using a three pin design. I don't know, is this considered a two or three pin design? If I can get it out. I don't know what the, uh, the keyboard nerds call it, but looks like two pins to me. Uh, we also have this included wrist rest, which feels super comfortable. One thing I'll note here is that uh, it is magnetic. There's magnets on either side. The one on the right is a little weak and the one on the left seems virtually non-existent. You'll notice that this one actually does connect when I push it towards the keyboard, but on this side, it doesn't even grip the keyboard whatsoever. It just kind of hangs loosely, which is a little annoying. Another thing, I'll just get this out of the way since I'm talking about things that aren't great. Uh, going back to this 10 key number pad, these buttons feel pretty good, at least these first three, uh, or the last three, but the first button is just a little hard to press. It feels like it's actually depressed, <laughs> depressed, uh, sort of like embedded a bit more deeply into the uh, into the housing than the other keys. So it just makes it harder to press. I feel like that combined with the uh, you know, the, the, the wrist rest issue uh, leaves me inclined to, uh, to say that this, this could use a little bit better QC. Everything else about the keyboard I have no issues with. It's RGB backlit and uh, it's all customizable within the software. I think their software is called Basecamp. I was playing around with that actually, just, just pulled up right here. It works well, it's super intuitive. It's, it's a really solid software that uh, right now it's recognizing all of our connected devices like the keyboard, the mouse, uh, as well as our um, display dock, which we'll talk about in a sec. Pleasantly surprised with the app, especially from a smaller company that's not quite as well known. Let me show you a look at the back of the keyboard or the bottom of it. Look at all those different channels. You can route it so many different ways straight out the back, left, right, or even on the sides. The cable itself is super thick and high quality as well. And then you've also got these, uh, these feet, which have these rubber pads on them. They are magnetic, they just pop right off. And the keyboard also comes included with additional feet uh, that have magnets in them. So you can uh, incline the keyboard according to your taste. I actually haven't done this yet, but let's see how it feels. The feet are, they, they hold up. You know, they don't just fall apart if you slide the keyboard left and right. The one drawback I will say about this keyboard, while it is very cool and there's a lot you can do with it and it's extremely customizable, it's $300, which is a pretty penny to pay for any keyboard that isn't completely built from the ground up. If the typing experience and noise and, and the feel of the keys is top priority, then this is probably not worth $300 because that's not what the focus is for this particular product. If you're looking for an insane amount of customizability and modularity and, and good software, then then maybe. But still $300 is just, that that's a lot. But uh, you guys let me know what you think about that price tag and, and what you think of the features of the board so far. Moving on though, we've got the Makalu 67 gaming mouse. It's an ultra lightweight mouse. Uh, it feels really good in the hand. It's not ambidextrous, although it kind of looks that way. So you can see it's kind of got this like rib cage design on the outside so you can sort of see inside of it where there's not much going on just like bare essential uh, hardware just to make the mouse operable but no no weights or anything like that they keep it really light it's using Omron switches rated for 50 million clicks the scroll wheel actually feels really good as does the click and then you've got a DPI adjustment button and then you got the side buttons on the left front and back all of these buttons on the mouse are reprogrammable within the base camp software and the braided kit this has to be the softest sleekest braided cable I've ever seen on a mouse. It is so soft. It feels like a shoelace. It's so, so nice to touch, uh, but I'm getting carried away. It's, it's a good mouse. I actually like this mouse. I was playing a little bit of Doom earlier. It tracks really well. 
This is the Mountain Display Pad, which is sold separately. It's just its own uh, own product. Programmable display buttons. There's three, four, five, six, 12 of them. And unlike the uh, 10 key number pad on our Everest Max, all these keys feel perfect. They're all identical to each other and they actually click a bit easier than the rest of the keys on, on the Everest Max numpad. This bottom piece is really just uh, a weight so that it doesn't slide around, uh, which is great because like the, the Steam Deck, that thing you press it like with the faintest amount of pressure and it just, you know, gets pushed off your desk. The thing just slides around on me so much. I can't even deal with it. Also, Mountain could have not made it any easier to program these buttons with their software. It's just so easy. You just point and click. Most of these icons they already just had within the software. You could just choose them. I didn't have to like, you know, upload them myself or whatever. Really nice product, actually. I, I really do like this one. Um, and similarly, you also have the, the macro pad, um, which is instead of 12 display keys, you get 12 macro buttons. Again, fully programmable. They have the exact same weight dock as the display pad. It is backlit as well. So when it's powered on, it pretty much looks like uh, what, what you see here with the keyboard. Last but not least, we have the other keyboard that they sent, which is a smaller version of the Everest Max, Everest 60. And you guessed it, 60% keyboard. This just plugs in USB-C on the back, but there's three locations. There's literally three USB-C ports. And then sold separately is the Everest 60 numpad. So just like with the Everest Max, this has the option to connect. Oh wait, there's a little plastic panel covering up that USB-C port. So you gotta move that first, plug it in and bam. Again, there's options to mount it to either side of the keyboard. I'm curious how much this is selling for. 150, okay, that's that's a bit more reasonable. Still not super cheap, but um, it is kind of cool that you can uh, have the option for, for the numpad. I feel like that's, that's one thing that's always held me back from using a 60% keyboard. Um, as a daily. I love numpads, I use them all the time. If I was traveling for work and I was, I knew I was gonna need a numpad at some point, I'd probably bring something like this because both of these can just like get packed down very portably and then when you set up at the hotel or wherever, uh, you just pop them out and and boom, there you go. You've got you've got your cake and you can eat it too. And it does seem these switches are hot swappable as well. Oh, they're actually lubed, uh, as are the cherry stabilizers. The stabs are pre-lubed too. You guys want a sound test? Here we go. Let's do the Everest. Oh, way different. So then maybe the Max isn't pre-lubed? I don't know, it definitely doesn't feel like it compared to the Everest 60. It's not advertised anywhere on here, so if it is, I don't know why they didn't market that. All right, all right, all right. So, I think at this point, the only two products I have left to check out are at home, and they need to be demoed at home for very specific, important reasons. So why don't we go home? Bro, 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 this, I've been playing this. I've been playing this for like the last three hours. I've gotten a little carried away just rearranging furniture in my house to make custom Mario Kart tracks. It's, it's honestly a problem. The cats love it, although they actually don't love the, the go-kart. She gets really mad when I, when I run it next to her. But um, this is so fun. This is actually the most fun I've had with AR. I think it's the best implementation of AR that I've personally experienced. If you guys have no idea what this is, I think it's been out for a while, but if you're not sure, if you haven't heard of it, it basically transforms your, your living space or whatever space you're in into a Mario Kart racetrack using augmented reality. You can race against AI like I've been doing, or you can race against other people, but uh, every player needs their own Nintendo Switch in their own car. And I think one of these is like around hundred bucks or something. Basically, uh, the AR just plasters a bunch of animations on top of your living room. So you, the cart and driver, the AI, all the items, weapons, and the environment. You can actually choose which Mario Kart course you want to run. And then, so if, if it's like an icy, snowy level, then, you know, the, the AR will, will slap a bunch of like, uh, snowfall and uh, icicles and stuff in your living space. So you can change it up and it doesn't get too stale. What's super neat is that the physical card actually responds and reacts to in-game events. So it'll stop for a brief moment if you get hit by a shell, if you slip on a banana peel, and if you get a boost or use a mushroom item, it'll speed up for a short while. Making your own track is super easy. So the product comes included with these, these uh, gates, these cardboard gates, there's four of them. You set them up wherever you want and the switch will direct you to drive through all four gates in, uh, in whatever path that you choose and it'll record that path and that becomes your course. You can even customize all the gates in terms of what they provide. So if you want them to have item boxes or if you want them to have boosts or a magnet, 
um, that's all configurable within the Switch as well. And while it's absolutely not necessary, I do recommend playing around with your furniture to, to kind of amp up the courses uh, like I have. I mean, there's just like so many different things that you can do. My friend and roommate Ian, he, he thought about putting this this over here. This was just gonna go in the garbage and now it's a, now it's a tunnel, now it's a long tunnel. And we put a boost, we put a boost at this gate right here so that you can just boost straight through it. Uh, the cart itself doesn't look like, it, it doesn't really go too fast, but it's plenty fast when you're playing the game. But playing the game makes it seem like you're going like standard Mario Kart speed, which is awesome. Endless possibilities, so much replay value. I absolutely love this thing. This isn't a perfect product though. One thing I wish was a little bit better is um, the, the, the camera is like pretty good. Actually, it's pretty good, but it, I wish, you know, maybe I'm just spoiled. If the camera was just slightly better, I think it could be a little crispier. That'd be, that'd be pretty sweet, but it's not a huge deal. And then also the connectivity. The connectivity could be a little stronger. For example, I can't actually make the course go from this end of the house to that end of the house. Actually, it can probably go that way, but as soon as it makes a left turn and that wall's between me and the cart, then it pretty much loses connection and becomes unresponsive. So that does sort of limit uh, the, you know, the types of courses, the, the scale of courses that I can do. Overall though, this is really, honestly, I think a must have product for any Nintendo Switch owner. It's just a ton of fun. There's so much that you can do with it and uh, I'll probably be getting a second one so I can play with my friends. And the final product of the day is a litter box. Yes, it's an automatic cat litter box, so I guess it's, it technically counts as a tech product. This is the Family Automatic Cat Litter Box model number PCB, haha, <laughs> PCB, M65A. I set it up a few days ago, so it's been about three days and the cats have had plenty of time to familiarize th themselves with it. And overall, I really like this litter box. I've been using a, a litter robot for the last four or five years now. I think I have the first generation one, and that one's been great. I, I really liked it. It's been the only automated self, uh, self cleaning litter box that, that I've ever owned or used up until this one. And while I do still like the litter robot a lot, I think this one does uh, certain things a lot better than, than that model. So for starters, I will say that the family is much smaller than the litter robot. It is like, it looks puny in comparison, which I think is mostly a good thing um, because it keeps it more compact. You can put it in more areas, more corners of the room. It just looks a lot nicer too. It has this minimal design where, uh, I don't know, the original litter robot just kind of looks like an eyesore now with that nasty khaki color and it's just so big and bulky. One thing to be aware of is that because the, the litter barrel is a lot smaller than something like the litter robot, uh, you wanna make sure that your cats are gonna be able to fit. I mean, I've got some pretty large cats. They fit in here just fine. It looks a little tight on them, but um, you know they usually stick their head out when they're when they're using it, and they, they haven't seemed to have an, an issue. Actually, the girl had a bit of an issue, which I'll, I'll touch on in just a moment. The self-cleaning mechanism here is pretty similar to the litter robot. It's a, a litter barrel that pretty much rotates side to side, basically sifting away the waste from the litter. And once it's got it separated, it basically just dumps it into a chute. Although the chute on this product actually goes up here inside of this trash bag. It just goes directly into the trash bag and then you you know, un unhook that whenever it's full, dump it, replace it with a new one. Whereas the litter robot uses a drawer style. So it's got a drawer at the very bottom that it pulls out and that's where all the waste goes. You usually line that with a, a trash bag as well. But because that trash bag is a bit more open and, and the drawer is a bit more open, um, the odor elimination is not nearly as good on the first gen litter robot as it is on this. This eliminates odor very well. It's also got like a ne negative ion deodorizer, which does use any chemicals and it does mask the smell very nicely. I have two cats, brother and sister, and I was expecting it to smell a lot more with the both of them using it, um, but it's it actually does a really great great job of uh, killing any odor. Maintenance wise, the family is pretty good. It's, it doesn't really require all that much maintenance, but I would say it's a little bit better on the litter robot simply because you don't have to fill up litter quite as much or quite as often with the litter robot as you do with this one. That's because there's a minimum uh, litter line, not just a max line. There's a max line on both products, but the family has a minimum line as well. So you can't let the litter get too low, otherwise the cleaning, the self-cleaning mechanism won't work. Um, so I do have to replace the litter every three days or so, or not replace, but just top it off um, and get it back to the max line. Whereas I can go seven to 10 days on the litter robot without ever having to top off the litter simply because there is no minimum litter line. That being said, it's not a deal breaker or anything. The family is still really easy to use and incredibly low maintenance overall. Like a lot of high-end self-cleaning litter boxes these days, this one has an app. 
Uh, you can actually clean manually if you don't want to wait for the automated cycle or if you just you know, want to do an extra clean, you can do that straight from your phone. You can also deodorize it manually, even though that can be automated as well. What I really like about the app though is that it tracks your cat's activity and usage, uh, excretion times, and weight. So right now, like my cats are on a diet. I put them on a diet a few weeks ago and I can actually monitor their weight as the days and weeks go by because there's a sensor and scale inside of this barrel that just pushes all the information to the phone and I can just track it uh, in real time, which is really nice. Now, how did the cats react to the new litter box, you ask? Well, I do have two cats. So the boy is Riot, which is on the right, and the girl is Zen on the left. And the boy has always been the more competent one when it comes to potty training. He, it just comes naturally to him. He's never really had many issues. So he was the first one to kind of scope out and, and sniff out the, uh, the new litter box. And he was a little curious at first, as, as cats generally are, but within a few seconds, he was in there doing his business without a problem. The girl, however, she struggled on her first couple of attempts. I think mainly it's just because she has a lot more anxiety, and so she just wasn't really sure how to approach or use the litter box at first. So the first couple times she, she tried to use it, uh, her butt was kind of hanging out halfway, and she ended up just pooping on the floor. Totally missed it, um, but that's okay. On the third attempt, she finally got it, and I'm very proud of her. She was actually able to use it uh, successfully for a few times after that. Now it seems like they're both uh, using it just fine without issue, and to be honest, I'll probably continue using it for a while before swapping back to the litter robot, if I ever do. This might just be my new permanent litter box for, for the time being, uh, just because, again, the odor elimination is far superior, and I really love the size, the, the form factor, and it's just much less of an eyesore around the house. So overall, uh, great product so far. Oh, did I also mention it's like $150 cheaper than the Litter Robot. I think mine was around $500 when I first bought it five years ago. Now they're at like $700 for a freaking litter box. Yes, they have an app now and they apparently got the, the odor elimination under control, but that's still a lot of money. $700 is still a lot of money for, for a freaking litter box. That's roughly 550, still a lot, but notably cheaper. But that is gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please toss a like on the video before you go and get subscribed for more tech content on the way really soon. Till next time, We'll see you guys later. Bye. Say bye. Don't don't poop on the floor again. That wasn't that wasn't nice.